Hey kids, how you doing? My name's Tom McLaughlin. I'm an author and an illustrator. These are strange times. I hope you're all okay, stuck inside your houses. It's a bit crazy, isn't it? It's a bit sort of, well, it's quite exciting, but also really boring at the same time, which is a very odd combination. Well, hopefully I'm going to entertain you for about 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to have a bit of a story time. I'm going to read some of the accidental prime minister, but we're all going to do some drawing first. Um, draw along and a sort of story time all rolled into one. Um, for this, I'm going to be drawing on an iPad, but all you need is a, a blank piece of paper, uh, a nice pencil that's kind of sharp, and an eraser. We're going to show you how to create uh, the character from the Outstanding Prime Minister using really simple shapes, circles, triangles, squares, rectangles, all shapes that we can draw. Um, that's how we're going to build up a character. And then, while I'm finishing off the drawing, we're going to have a bit of a story time too. I'm going to read you a bit of this book too. So, without further ado, shall we get going? So we're going to start off with some really simple shapes. There's my blank piece of paper. I'm just going to be using a pencil. Uh, on my iPad. Uh, so we've got a circle and a triangle. Then we're going to make sure the circle's at the top, the triangle's in the middle. These couple of little sticks at the bottom, they're going to be the legs, and the little sticks on the side, they're going to be his arms. He's going to be holding his um, briefcase. So let's draw that. That's a, just a, a, a rectangle. Really, really simple shapes. Quite often what I do when, um, if I'm doing some drawing, is I quite often act it out. Uh, act out the scene, how does it look? Stand in front of the mirror, oh, okay, it's going to be holding the suitcase like this. It can really help you with your drawing. So there's little guidelines going uh, vertically and horizontally on the circle. Kind of show me where the eyes and the mouth is going to go. And the nose, of course. There's little circles at the side, going to be the ears. Little smiling mouth. He's got glasses, our character, so a couple of little circles. We can start to add a little bit of detail. Let's have him wearing a sort of, he's wearing like a big grown up's tie. Um, but we're going to be having him uh, wearing shorts, I think. So that's those little sticks and suddenly start to become the legs. So for the shorts, it's just a couple of rectangles, really. A few little squiggles, got very squiggly hair, which is always quite good fun to draw. So we're using the pencil, we're kind of holding it like that at the minute. We might want to hold it to the side if we want to do some shading. I think we can do some shading later. Let's start to draw that little hand in. Hands are quite tricky to draw. Um, but you've got one right there if you want to copy it or just do a bit of a squiggle sometimes that's fine some of my finest work has been squiggled this is going to be holding the briefcase because they're always standing outside number 10 Downing Street holding a big old briefcase aren't they I think they keep their pat lunch in there adding a few little details we're going to make that circle where his head is we're going to sort of make it a little bit pointy at the bottom because it's Got a bit of a sort of pointy, pointy chin and neck. But you can still hopefully see it's made up of a circle and a triangle for the body. Let's get those glasses. Those kind of little guidelines are really useful when you're drawing glasses. You can see where they're going to sit on the face. Let's make the tie. I think we might do some stripes on the tie. What I'm doing is pressing really lightly with the pencil, then if I'm happy with it, I add more detail. Um, then any bits I want to take away, it's, it's easy to erase. You're not, you haven't pressed too hard. I know I'm working on a computer for this, but it's the same with a piece of paper. Always pressing lightly and then we can add detail. So those shorts, let's start shading them in. There we go, it's starting to come together. So hopefully you're copying along with all this, but while I'm sort of adding some more detail, taking away a few little lines, adding more lines, um, rather than sitting watching me draw, I thought it might be quite nice 
to do some story time. So I'm going to hand over to myself. I'm going to read you a bit of the Acts 10 Prime Minister, and it's all about a boy called Joe. Joe is quite a quiet lad. He doesn't really say much, but today that's all going to change because he finds out his local park is being closed down. And this joke makes Joe really mad because he loves his park. It's, uh, it's where he goes to play football with his best mate, AJ. And it's where his mum works too. So he thinks, I've got to do something to save the park. So he has an idea. The Prime Minister of Great Britain is visiting his school. Now, the Prime Minister is not a very nice man, but Joe thinks even he will keep the park open if I have a word and try and persuade him, because everyone loves parks. So the bit I'm going to read you, Joe and AJ are on the way to the school to have a word with the Prime Minister. <clears throat> the accidental Prime Minister by me. By the time AJ and Joe got to school, there was a huge crowd already there of excited school children, policemen, TV reporters and cross-looking members of the public. There at the front of the crowd stood, stood the headmaster, Mr Brooks. AJ nudged Joe. Mr Brooks looks really weird. Has he combed his hair differently? Mr Brooks had indeed combed his hair differently, but that wasn't it. Suddenly Joe figured it out. I know, I know, he's smiling. Oh yeah, AJ realised. It's really creepy, isn't it? He never does that. What's going on, Mr Brooks? said Joe. Mr Brooks sighed impatiently. Oh no, not you two. I warn you, any mischief, and you two will be for the high jump. Is the Prime Minister coming, sir? AJ asked, looking at the big black limo that had just pulled up behind the police motorcycles. Yes, it was supposed to be a secret. You know, for security reasons, seeing how he's pretty much hated by most people these days. But some buffoon must have told the papers. I mean... Look at all these cameras, he said, suddenly grinning and running a licked finger over one eyebrow. The doors of the black limo opened and out stepped a man in a mud-coloured suit. He had a red wobbly face and in the middle sat a bulbous nose like a cherry on a particularly disgusting trifle. The man dabbed his sweaty face with a hanky and attempted to flatten his wispy hair with a clammy hand. The man in question was Percival T. Duckholm. There he is. Blah. He was the Prime Minister of Great Britain and it's fair to say one of the most disliked men in the land. He was the kind of man who would not only sell his grandmother for a quick book, but he'd also try and sell your grandmother too. In fact, if you've got a moment, I suggest you give her a quick ring and tell her not to answer the door to any trifle-faced Prime Ministers. Percival T. Duckholm was also one of the rudest men you're ever likely to meet. He liked to shout at people. In fact, shouting was his most favourite thing in the world. He'd shout in the morning at breakfast at his poor wife and pale children. Then he'd have a bath and shout a bit in there. And then he'd get dressed and shout about how he couldn't find his socks. And then he'd go to work and shouty, shouty, shouty until lunch before it all got too much and he had to have a little nap before home time. Well, you may say, surely he can't be this bad. Surely someone must like him. I mean, he did manage to become Prime Minister after all. Well, the simple truth is the man he was up against was even more loathsome. I know it's hard to believe, but let me tell you about Melvin Thwick, a man so obnoxious if you ever got to meet him, it would take all your strength not to vomit through your nose just to be in the same room as him. He had greasy hair, terrible breath, and dandruff so bad you'd think winter had come early looking at the state of his shoulders. He picked his nose with all the eagerness and desperation of a man looking for loose change down the back of a sofa, and when he spoke it sounded like farts. He had the charm and manners of a drunk pig feeding at the trough. He hated pretty much everyone and everything and made no secret of trying to hide it. So there you have it, a very short story of why Percival T. Duckholm became Prime Minister. He just happened to find an opponent, an opponent even more repulsive than him. So anyway, where were we? Oh yes, Percival T. Duckholm emerged from the car. He waved and smiled at the crowds, even though no one was cheering him. In fact, they were all booing him. Joe looked round and saw quite a mob, quite a mob had gathered. The more Percival smiled, the more they shouted and wailed at him. Resign, you lump! One angry lady yelled. You're a crook! Another man shouted. This just, this just seemed to whip the reporters and cameramen into more of a frenzy. Percival T. Duckholm ignored the crowd and ahead for Mr. Brooks, the headmaster. What a marvellous school you have here, he shouted. Thank you. Would you like to meet some of the children? Mr. Brooks replied eagerly. Oh, no. It's bad enough. I have to spend time with my own kids. Joe pushed his way to the front of the crowd. This was his chance. He figured if he just explained about the park to the Prime Minister, he would fix it. I mean, that's what Prime Ministers do, isn't it? They fix things. Uh, Mr Prime Minister, sir, can I ask you a question? Joe said timidly. Oh, the PM shrieks, get away from me, you horrible creature. I just wanted to ask you a question about our park. 
You just wanted to belch a question about a shark? The Prime Minister said. Speak up, lad! No, I wanted to ask a question about our park. Our park's being closed down and they're going to build a big shiny tower on it. By now, everyone was listening. Even Mr Brooks was staring at Joe with a mixture of bewilderment and anger on his face. It was mostly anger, maybe 5% bewilderment. Joe wasn't used to people actually listening to him. He normally liked to sit quietly, let AJ take the lead. But he knew this could be his only chance to save his mum's job. Ah, the Prime Minister said, smiling. At last, a sensible question. Yes, it is true, lad. We have closed down the grotty old park to build a shiny new tower. That's what this government's all about. Building shiny new things. No need to thank me, Sonny Jim. The PM gave Joe a toothy grin, ruffled his hair and walked away. What an idiot, AJ said, looking at the Prime Minister. Hey, Joe, are you all right? But Joe wasn't all right. He was about a zillion miles from all right. His blood was hot and full of anger. How could someone so important be so useless? And I shall have to stop there. Otherwise, I'll carry on reading. But I will say that Joe has a bit of a shout at the uh, Prime Minister. Uh, It gets videoed. It goes viral. He becomes the most famous boy in the world. And suddenly, people start saying, you should become Prime Minister. And he's like, what, me? Don't be ridiculous, I'm a kid. I can't become Prime Minister. And then his best mate AJ says, yeah, but if you're Prime Minister, you get to live in a big mansion and you don't have to do double maths. And Joe goes, do you know what? I think I'll give it a go. Um, that's the end of story time. And by the looks of it, that's the end of drawing time too. Hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I'd love to see your drawings. So share some on Twitter uh, and I will, I will retweet them. Um, I'd love to see them. But hopefully that's given you idea of how I build my characters um, and you can build your own characters, start drawing your own designs and things like that. But thank you very much for joining me on this strange, strange, strange time that we're all living in. Uh, Stay safe kids and I shall see you again very soon. Bye!